somebody give this guy a wave offering. Take your two hands and give God a wave offering. So, Father, we give you the meaning moments of this worship experience. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that it is your detail to have mercy. Speak to us from the witness of your word and so cause the things that we do, the things that we say, the things that we hear, to redound to the honor and glory of your name. We thank you that the entrance of your word gives light. In your word is all things appertaining to life in its abundance. Feed upon us your eternal will, that we may be warmed by your abiding presence. We honor you. We praise you. We bless you. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. So, sisters and brothers, even as we begin this moment of proclamation, that we confess from now that there is no way that I can do justice to the text that I feel constrained to preach from. But suffice it to say that we are living in an age, an age that demands that we dot every I and cross every T. We find ourselves trapped in the vortex of a time that is very calamitous because of those who are the masterminds of unprovoked aggression and of those who are hell-bent on power grabbing. It is hard for some to discipline themselves and to recognize that it is in God that they live, move, and have their being. For in their own self, they have determined that they are masters of their own state and the captains of their own soul. Living in a world where so few are prepared to believe and to stand firm on what he or she believes. The fact of the matter is that we are in a moment where faith in all of its aspects are not only, is not only under attack, but faith is being trivialized and the men are squirming at the thought of God. Young brothers and sisters, we are forced to face a brazen reality that things are not always within our control. And that there are times the unexpected happens. And in the midst of the unexpected happening, we need a God who is able to bear us in those turbulent times. Those of us who have professed faith in God and Jesus Christ, we are characterized by a resolute faith or faith stance. For like the Apostle Paul, we do have a certain, I know in whom I have believed. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Brothers and sisters, those of us who have put our faith in God, we are assured that our faith is built on a solid foundation for the God of our salvation can be trusted 
for his word shall not return to him void. Therefore, those of us who have come to taste and to see that God is good, we have a right to praise him. Whoever enters the passage of scripture from the Jewish Torah in Genesis chapter 15 is a passage that is pregnant with biblical offerings. For it is a passage that tells us about the magnanimous nature of our sovereign God. Tara, if I had time, I would remind the church that in the first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis, we have primordial or primeval stories. In the midst of them, God's power is made manifest in the midst of chaos and an evil generated world. Yet our God steps into nothingness and calls for things that did not exist. Yet, Robert Smith, it is in chapter 12 that God begins a new chapter as he calls a man by the name of Abraham out of the land of the earth of the Chaldeans. And in this man, he begins a new people, a people we will come to know as Israel, the Hebrews, God's covenanted people. I wish I had time this morning, this afternoon, but time does not allow Miss Andrews. Therefore, we must train ourselves to the fact that it is a God who steps into Abram's world and calls him. So that I should remind all of us who think that we are where we are because of our own selves, that it is by the initiation of God that you and I are where we are. May I remind you as a church that this God who comes to Abram is an unknown God. Abram didn't know him before then. But something about the call of God caused Abram to say yes to the Lord. He journeys from the land of Haran to the land of Canaan. We are been told that a famine breaks out the land of Canaan, and so he migrates to the land of Egypt, where he believes that he was lying to say that Sarai is his sister and not his wife. We are told that because of his lying, he is expelled from the land of Egypt. He begins a journey and strife emerges between himself, or rather his herdsman and the herdsman of his nephew Lot. We are told that because of the bill of tithes, Abram says to Lot, the land is before us. If you choose right, I'll go left. If you choose left, I'll go right. I don't want no problems. Take what you want. I got time to tell you, but Lot chose to go down into Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, we are told that the lands were invaded and Lot was captured and one person survived to tell Abram that the nephew Lot is in dire straits. We are told that Abram mounted an assault and he caught back his nephew Lot. We are told that while he is en route from the battle, the victorious battle, he is met by the king or the priest of Salem, Melchizedek. And there he is blessed again. And we ask the question, why did your mother reiterate all of those subordinate facts? Because the text in chapter 15 opens after all these things. The Lord appeared to Abram in a vision. May 
die reminding the church that it doesn't matter all what you've gone through, the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, nothing, no one can stop God from coming to you. Why don't you prophesy to yourself and tell yourself, nothing and no one can stop God from coming to me sometimes. You feel as if the pressures of life can stop the movement of God. Sometimes we believe that people are able to stop God's intervention on our behalf. But God is able to break through in spite of our life's circumstances because He is God all by Himself. Nothing and no one. Can stop God from coming to me. Nothing or no one can stop God from coming to you. I, I'm, I'm trying not to preach, but my soul gets happy. <laughs> and here is how God appears in vision. He says, I am your protector. I'm your shield and I'm your exceeding reward. Yes. 
gotta stop. Because we gotta go. I wanna tell you that God has great things in store for his people. And that time I'm going to remind the church that Abraham had a brother whose name was Haran. But the blessings was not for him. It was for Abram. And Abram took his nephew Lot, but the blessings was not for him. Can I advise somebody? Be careful who you take with you on this blessed journey because everybody is not able to go with you. Not everybody is able to handle what God is doing in your life. And the very people you carry behind you are some of the people that will mess with you. But I've got news for you. Even if they mess with you, they cannot stop what God has decreed and declared. Because the Bible declares that thy word is forever settled in the heavens. Give me two more seconds. I'm gone. He says, the Lord comes to him in a vision. Says, I want to tell you that I am your shield and your reward shall be very great. This can't come from no politician. This comes from God. Say, God talking. If God says it, you can put it to the bank and cash it. It will come to pass. How is this blessing manifesting? I want to tell you that God says to Abraham, Abraham at the time, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward according to the king in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Bible, he says, your reward shall be very great. The covenant will be great. Can I tell you that God is a promise-making God? Yes, yeah, some of us all we living by are the promises of God. He promised that he could work it out on our behalf. He promised that he would make our mountain to stand strong. He promised that he will clear the path. And Brother Eric, in the midst of God's promise, Abram objects. He says, I hear you, Lord. But I know if you really got the email, concerning my biological realities. He says, in case you forgot I was 75 years old when you first called me. And up to now I ain't seen nothing that goes with what you promised. In fact, Abram says, I ain't got no children. And based on what you promised me, it seems as if Eliezer of Damascus of Syria, if you please, is going to become heir in my house. Can I speak to somebody in here when God makes you a promise? No matter how it looks, it doesn't matter if things are not lining up based on your calculation. That look as if it's going to work out. It doesn't make sense. Can I remind somebody if God makes a promise? God has what is necessary to fulfill that promise. Doesn't matter how much you object, he says, I, I, I ain't see what you see. God says to him, I on your run with Eliezer. Want to tell you that an issue from your own noise is going to be your heir. He says, and I ain't even talking about the Ishmael. Talking about a seed between you and your wife, Sarah. He says, How I know it? He took him outside. He said, Look at the stars in the heavens. He said, As the stars are there, so will I make your descendants great. I'm going to stop. May I remind you, leave it to God to bring his promises. 
to flourish in. It is not our place to figure out how God is going to do it. The Bible says, and this is where I am, and Abraham believed God. It was accounted unto him as righteousness. He used to sing, Sister Tanea, may not know how, may not know when, but he'll do it again. We are called, beloved, to believe
of prayer a time for you. I don't want to ask you what do you tell me. No one's asking any of your private business. What we are suggesting to you is that there is a God who is worthy of our confidence. He didn't need you to call you. He didn't need you to make promises to you. And surely he doesn't need you to bring those promises to fruition. He's God. Abram believed God. It was accounted to him as righteousness. The question is, will you believe God? Prophet says, even if there be no cattle in the stall, no grapes on the vine, no olives on the trees, do you still believe God? You believe Him when the signs are so first, the reports are so contrary, will you still believe God? When the signs and death and decay all around you. But you still believe that God is able to bring you out with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. Somebody ought to lift their hands and say, Lord, increase my capacity to believe, to repose confidence in you. Because God can be trusted. So, Father, we thank you that you are a God who initiates contact with us. You are a God who enters into covenant with us. Bring the best to us and the best out of us. We confess in our human frailties when we look at our limited abilities, we feel as if we are out of our league. But if you have called us, you will equip us. So, Father, we come to this altar now. Asking you to increase our capacity, believing, so that we may repose our confidence in you. We thank you, God, that to all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy. We thank you that in the good times and in the bad times, in spite of our human frailties and our mistakes and mess ups and missteps, your promise is still in doubt. God, we thank you that what you are doing in our lives is too great and grand that you won't even allow us mess it up. Because according to Jeremiah 29, 11, you have plans concerning us. Plans for good and not for evil. Plans to give us a hope and a future. Thank you, God. And our faith rests in you. Our confidence is in the God of of our salvation. Thank you, God. Now, God, move on behalf of your people. Some are believing you for full and complete healing. Move on their behalf. Some 
Bible, even for some angel went through over oh, there. Perhaps somebody is tired paying the rent. They want a house to call a home of them. God made ways out of the way. Someone needs peace in a home. But you make a way out of the way. Someone needs children who are respectful and grateful. Would you turn the hearts of sons to fathers, hearts of daughters to mothers, mothers' hearts to daughters, fathers' hearts to sons? And somebody is believing you for a miracle. Would you move on their behalf? Somebody is believing you for a job. Somebody is believing you for a better job. Somebody is believing you for upward mobility in the job. We thank you because it is time. God, would you snatch from the precipice of death those who are not destined for destruction? so that we may count your praises and extol your name. For you are the God who delivers us from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of 